Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this IMSERV webinar. Today, I'm joined by myself. My name is Jason Taylor. I'm the Customer Service and Insight Manager, and uh, Paul Farrell, who is the Partner Manager. Between us, we have over 20 years of industry experience. Today, we're going to look at how to save money in the high energy consuming yet environmentally conscious leisure industry. We appreciate your time today, and I just need to run through some housekeeping tasks. Please, during this webinar, we're using audio broadcasts. This box in the right-hand corner will need to remain open throughout. To chat to hosts, click on the speech bubble in the top right-hand corner, then type in the text box. Submit a question, click on the question mark in the top right hand corner, open the Q&A box. Should we enter or have it, uh, technical difficulties, please email marketing at imserve.com or speak to us directly through the chat bar. Now to the agenda for today. So we're going, from my point of view, we're going to look at challenges facing energy managers within the ledger industry, uh, sector today. We're going to look at top tips saving energy in the ledger sector. We're going to look at principles in practice and an IMSERV case study. Colleague Paul Farrell is going to talk about IMSERV, the services it offers, software and technology to help reduce energy costs. So on to industry challenges. This is where our customers come to us and look to us for help and assistance. And first, we're looking at tight budgets in times of increasing cost and decreasing trade. And we understand that customers and retention is very important to you and growth just as important. Innovation is leading to energy wastage. So it's understanding where and why. Inefficiencies over time. So for example, decreasing profit, age of equipment, monitoring already in place, and does it suit your purpose? Ability of clear and informative energy usage data. For example, where and how and who. Is it based on geographical location? Is it on site? Is it based on brands? Find resources to educate staff in energy reduction techniques. So help, helping staff to understand the information they need and support they require to help reduce the, the energy consumption across the board. Obtaining staff buy-in. We think this is uh, vital from top down to bottom up and helping to recognize how everyone plays a part in that process. It is the benefits of successful energy management at board level. So understanding the benefits and how this impacts at the board level and the support that is required from everybody again in that process. Part is also the PR that comes across from implementing various uh, services and techniques that are given. In return on investment or ROI in short time frames, we appreciate come differ and uh, everyone has different uh, ideas of when they wish to have a return on investment. And we will support those during that journey. And last of all, meeting strict regulations and legislation. So we appreciate this is just as important for not only us as a business, but also ourselves in supporting and demonstrating that you are following regulations and legislation from your, from your level. So moving on to why IMSERV customers are focusing on energy management. And here to talk about a few examples of the feedback that we have. First one, we to one of our customers, uh, Bourg Leisure, 
realise that electric and gas consumption monitoring and control is vital to future business. They have the right controls in place and need to have the information that's available to them to help them make informed decisions. Understanding the need to reduce cost, so demonstrating again at board level the cost savings that are being made and why. I come to understand to promote their corporate social responsibilities or CSR. They more intelligence from their energy data to understand staff versus customer energy consumption. Again, for example, you have staff consumption and also customer consumption and trying to work out where the cost uh, and saving could be made. Understand, for example, energy consumption at local level. So a customer, for example, uh, who is a caravan park and they're installing sub-metering on individual caravans and various on-site equipment to help them understand their consumption at a more detailed level. Most importantly is understanding where energy consumption wastage occurs, especially out of hours and how to reduce this. And then we have a customer who is looking at water wastage and why that occurs and where. And they're measuring water wastage at night, for example, on their swimming pools and trying to understand how they can implement cost save initiatives by creating an action plan uh, based on the data that is being provided to them. Moving on to energy saving top tips. First of all is understanding energy consumption and cost cost utilities. First of all, this is having the right equipment in place. It's also understanding what you want to measure and what are you looking to save and when are you looking to save it by. It's interesting when and why waste is occurring. Without the information that's available, you then can't put in place your action plan to try and implement savings. Remove wastage and implement action plans. Our idea is to take a bite-sized chunk approach. So, for example, start off with electricity and then make your way through to gas and water to try and get all the information that's readily available to you. After all, it is a journey. Review communication approach. So tailor different levels within the business, understanding who and where to pitch your communication. This is the greatest impact, and this is where we feel good communication uh, provides a great insight. And lastly, continue monitoring and evaluation, and that's about maintaining the monitor evaluation. So you put the equipment in, you're receiving the monitoring, but it's about maintaining that. After all, you want a return on the investment that's been put in place. Moving to one of our customers, and we have an example of a case study here. Uh, this is for Auditel and customer, the Gondola Group Limited. Uh, Auditel is a leading specialist cost management consultancy, and the Gondola Group, for those of you not aware, consists of uh, Peaks Regress, ZZs, Ask, as well as Byron and Kettner's, and, and they are working with the Gondola Group and with ourselves to help reduce its energy consumption. The Gondola Group employs approximately 16,500 people and serves over 40 million meals a year, over 700 restaurants. So quite a lot of um, people going through there, quite a lot of business going through there. So we worked with Auditel to try and help them uh, control the cost further and present the information to their customer, the Gondola Group. So first of all, trying to make energy consumption more measurable, and it's about receiving accurate online energy information. So the information that's available, for example, gas or electricity or other areas that you wish to measure. Allow energy management strategies 
is to be put in place. So again, once you have the information, it allows you to make informed decisions about the decisions where you're going to action next. Make assumption manageable. So providing a visualization of the portfolio. So in this case, Auditel by working with the Gonda Group have provided online tool to their individual restaurant managers to help manage their site consumption and assess trend. And this allows the restaurant manager to take ownership and responsibility for their own individual site consumption. Making egg consumption management more interesting, so again, incentivizing managers to monitor and reduce their site consumption. If you give them empowerment, then you will find the saving will come, but you have to give them the tools and information to help them to do that. Making energy consumption more predictable, improving the ability to forecast accurately. We appreciate our customers that accurate information is vital to help you to understand your consumption and cost. It will also help reduce estimates in the future, and especially when you're tendering for supply, if you have accurate information, it will give you a more detailed view for your tendering for suppliers for electricity or gas consumption. This turn should virtually eliminate the need to query supplier invoices because the data you're receiving is based on accurate data rather than estimated data. And the Auditel are now enjoying an 8% electricity consumption reduction year on year. And this is partly down to the work uh, I'm have been doing with Auditel and the Gonza Group to help them understand their consumption further. I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Paul Farrell, and Paul is going to go through with you how we can help save money in the leisure sector. Thank you, Jason. Um, uh, thank you for those great insights uh, into the challenges faced within the energy sector, and of course, those great tips as well. Uh, I'm Paul Farrell. I work as partner manager within our commercial team, um, also known as third-party intermediate or TPIs, so a little bit more on that later as we go through. Uh, as per Jason's introduction earlier, I'm going to take you, tell you a little bit about what we do, uh, but more importantly focus on three things really, the services, the software, and the technology uh, that we use in order to primarily to save you money, but also really to help you, to help make life easier for you specifically within the leisure sector. Uh, in terms of giving you a general overview of IMSERV, I mean, the, the first thing just to mention at the start is that, and hopefully to maintain interest that this is going to be a worthwhile investment in time, is that we, we will save up to 30% uh, on energy costs, dependent on some of the things that I'm going to be talking about and some of the things Jason has already mentioned. First of all, it's quite important to understand you're dealing with a company that does have the heritage and, and uh, knowledge and um, credibility if you like, within the industry. We were set up back in 1992, uh, and we were and still are the UK's preeminent half-hourly data collector. We collect, in fact, almost half of all the UK's half-hourly data. We provide fiscal-grade metering and data collection services. What do I mean by fiscal? Really nothing more uh, complicated than data that ultimately results in a bill being generated. So typically things like half-hourly data uh, for those 116,000 half-hourly meters in the country, uh, and add into that uh, 270,000 or more non half hourly meters, so always talking about the commercial and industrial sector. We are a leading provider of specialist energy, energy monitoring and control solutions, and there's lots more of that as we go through. Uh, we're based here in sunny Milton Keynes. We've got 160 or so in our offices, and approximately six field based staff, which uh, puts us right up there in terms of our ability to install meters and other devices on a large scale and handle the largest of projects. We're also part of a UK-based Inventus PLC, which is a large systems and control company in all sorts of markets all over the world. So, Marie, uh, this is going to be very much about how we save you money, and these points that you see below you, the monitoring, visualization, and control, uh, these are our key points that I'm going to be returning to time and time again. 
So of uh, the services as part and parcel of that introduction, um, we are really independent. You know, why you ask is that important? Well, a lot of our clients seem to think it's more important than perhaps I have even thought or we might have even thought. So, for example, we are not connected to any of the energy suppliers, uh, which is extremely important in our business given the profile of our customers, uh, nor are we tied to any single meter or control equipment manufacturer. In other words, we're very much focused on choosing the best solution for our clients regardless of uh, who might manufacture them. Nor are we restricted to any single communications method or supplier. Why is that important? Well, mainly because it gives us uh, a success rate really second to none within the industry in terms of our core competency, which is installing meters where we can capture data. So in other words, we're using a variety of comms providers. So uh, for electricity, gas, and water, obviously the next, be next step, and there's going to be lots on this whole visualization piece, it's all about getting this secure data collection into online energy management format or, or tool. And as I say, we'll be talking about that as we go through. Um, as one parcel of this, we'll also be talking about our control services, which, we've, which have been going strong now for uh, four and a half years. Um, and that enables us to provide really a complete end-to-end -end and bespoke solution service to our clients, obviously starting with the data, moving through into the visualization piece, and then ultimately culminating in control where we will actively reduce energy consumption. Um, but the other thing to mention, because I think looking at our attendee list, and there's lots of you today, uh, which is great, we, we really have three routes to market within this business. Um, we have some very important energy suppliers, um, which is extremely important to us for, for lots of reasons, and it's one of the reasons why the, the lack of any connection to an energy supplier um, is very important. Uh, we, we do absolutely need that independence. Um, in to that, um, as mentioned already, I look after our partner channel customers um, who deal in, in directly with end user customers. And finally, we have a significant end user channel, lots of whom are within the energy sector. So, in terms of the key industries that we serve, you know, I could be quite smug here and say, well, given that we collect half of the UK's data, which is a factual statement, therefore we're dealing with half of the UK's key industries or more. Well, yeah, it is actually true, but I've tried to sort of distill it down into eight of the headline sectors because we are pretty much represented across the board. These really are the, the areas where we've had the biggest impact. It includes leisure, but also includes retail, utilities and telecoms, local government manufacturing, uh, and other areas as, as well. But ultimately, these are areas where we, 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 we seek to save our customers uh, money. In terms of the definition of the, the leisure sector, really for the purposes of Jason's and my presentation today, um, it, we're really focusing in on things like leisure centers and gyms, holiday parks, Jason's already mentioned one which was leisure, um, restaurants, gondola, gondola group, fantastic example of Pizza Express and Bar and Hamburgers and others, uh, and also some of the cinema chains. There are some specific issues related to the energy sector, um, as I found out in talking to some of those clients and in talking to some of those partners as well. This slide is, is quite a busy one. Um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, but I thought it would be useful uh, to put it up there to really present to you a very quick process overview of what we do. Everything down the left-hand side is, is about the complexity out there in the real world. So everything from regular fiscal meters, whether they be electricity or gas or water, through to submeter or AMNT, advanced monitoring and targeting, mini BMS, full scale BMS, water AMR, the list goes on. The point is, we, we capture data from all of those sources and we feed them then into the center area, which is um, uh, really demonstrated in a visual there of some servers. So in other words, we're capturing the data remotely from those devices and we're then uploading them onto uh, a visualization piece of software called Energy Data Vision, which many of you know and, and perhaps many don't know. But that is, in other words, that is about reducing complexity into a way that's really informative, vision engaging, and hopefully something that prompts you into taking action. Because you can have all the data in the world, as we often find through some of our partner customers especially, and if a customer does nothing with it, it's just a bunch of numbers. And uh, so, you know, blinding obvious facts, yes, um, but lots of people still, I think, need to learn that lesson, unfortunately. So, 
moving forward into the three areas, if you remember back to the beginning, I was talking about monitoring, visualization, control. These are three themes that I'll be returning to time and time again. So monitoring, just by way of introduction, uh, we've, we've actually talked about it mostly, so that, that's good news. So on the hand side, we're looking at the metering side. So that could include settlement, half-hourly meters, non-half-hourly meters, gas and water meters, sub-meters. So you know, that's about the physical means to an end. In other words, it's a meter, it's an installation service, it's maintenance, it's communications, all the stuff that enables you to then go to the right-hand side of the slide, capture the data. That's the important stuff, and even more so later on when we then present that data. So that's really what we're all about. But ultimately, uh, it can really be summarized, I guess, in three things. Energy-efficient technologies, that actually comprises the monitoring piece and the visualization piece. It gives fast access to data and any energy inefficiencies. The next part is about improving behaviors, and we can do that by dashboards, which will help reinforce behavior change by presenting energy performance in a really engaging way. And finally, the control piece, which is all about ensuring energy is only used where it's needed by, well, in, in, real, in effect, removing the human elements in most cases. We've got three slides, uh, or four slides, in fact, to, to uh, present to you with regards to the monitoring, because it is important to be aware of you know, how you access this data. Um, Actually, as you, as you can see from the first bullet point, most leisure sector companies pretty much are well advanced in this sphere. They were amongst the early adopters who went out and got AMR in really before they had to. It doesn't mean all leisure sector companies have done it, but I have to say, certainly in the last eight years I've worked in the business, uh, leisure sector companies are overly represented in terms of adoption of, of newer technologies. So it's very much a mark in, in this industry's favor. Um, I think it's also fair to say some, so, so really some of these leisure companies have set a high priority for this, and, and they've been reaping the benefits for it. Um, yeah, all I'm going to say at this point, because um, on, on that particular point, so moving on, really building and adding complexity, also part of this whole monitoring piece. So we're covered for fiscal. We're now looking at the sub-metering, or AMNT, Advanced Monitoring and Targeting. Some people uh, really call it AMNT is a posh word for, for sub-metering, uh, because it's about, as you see there on the first bullet point, uh, AMNT, Intelligent Sub-metering. So we are providing multiple metering and utilities into one central place, in our case, EDV, which uh, I'll be talking about in, in quite some detail shortly. So the typically it's going is, is delivered day plus one. Actually, we're seeing more and more companies, particularly in the leisure sector, who are, as I said already, amongst the early adopters, uh, looking for real-time or near real-time access to that data. Why, why do they want to do that? Well, they want to allocate consumption and charges to specific departments. They want to understand you know, where, why and when energy is being used, because you can learn so much from that. You can identify trends, potential energy waste, and ultimately influence behavior. So, um, so these are some really rapidly growing areas, uh, particularly in the leisure sector. Uh, I've got an additional slide here, which is not necessarily related to our services, but a bit of a throwback to a, a webinar we ran uh, earlier in the summer when we talked about the water industry, where there's big changes coming, some of you may recall, in 2017, will help you save money but really focuses the mind in terms of the sheer cost uh, of water and why it's important. And in fact, it's one of the reasons why we are seeing a huge in increase in the rate of inquiries for ways to reduce water consumption, in other words, water AMR. There's great examples here, some of which were used before, you know, nine pence water cost for a shower, 18 pence for a bath. And rather viciously, but it is actually a valid statement, a five and a half thousand pence for the water to fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Now, I don't overestimate that. You know, there are only eight Olympic-sized pools in the whole country, and there's four more being built. But it does illustrate an important point. There are some huge, huge uh, uh, water users out there within the leisure sector. And the costs, by the way, literally just cover the water. They don't, they don't cover treatment, purification, or the all-important heating. So certainly are some significant costs there associated with water, all of which we can help with. 
Uh, well, as I say, the good news about water AMR is that it's actually taken some significant leaps forward in the last year in particular, and really uh, it just works as a solution. It works very well. The reasons, I think, are well documented as to why people want it. People want accurate data. They want to effectively monitor consumption, and they want to be able to budget, uh, forecast budgets, etc. And I'll be coming back to that point, in fact, the forecasting budget piece, which is a key point perhaps to, to recall. The system itself is actually quite straightforward. It's just the installation of a data logger. You, you see a nice graphic of one that down there below. Essentially, it's a waterproof plastic, I would say box, but um, I don't know what you would call it, but essentially it contains a fire battery and a modem. It relies on being connected directly to a water meter. The water meter must have an available pulsed output. So essentially, we do all of that uh, in terms of doing the survey. We install the technology. We install the, the, the communications. And ultimately, we capture the data. We, we, from an installation point of view, we fully manage the project for the customer. And in fact, it is us, it is I am served that liaises with the water companies, and we project management manage it. Because again, some of you who work within the sector will, will know that the water industry is still a number of years behind electricity and gas from a competition point of view. So it is not necessarily the easiest sector to deal with. But we, we smooth all of that for you by managing it for you. In terms of you an idea of the scope and cost of it, typically we would, because of the scale of, of the effort involved and uh, potential complexity, we would typically be looking at a minimum of 10 sites. It's not uh, set in stone, however. Um, and from a, to give you an idea, site surveys typically cost about 100 pounds and years worth of service, which would include the logger, the comms, the access to the data, and so on. Uh, will typically set uh, a business back about a thousand pounds in total, so an average of about 200 pounds per year. But then set that against the savings, um, and, and it becomes very valuable indeed. So that monitoring, uh, you will now want to move on to the second of the three major bullet points. So we've moved from monitoring onto visualization. We really can't stress enough how important this is. You know, visualization is, is all about engaging with the customer presenting the data in a really powerful and useful way. So what is it? Well, it's a web-based energy management tool. It runs on our servers. There's no system requirements in terms of your servers. It runs off a web page, as simple as that. It provides you with powerful analytics and reporting. It's all delivered in a single and secure location, regardless of where you are in the world. Um, see so consumption patterns and trends. It lets you compare sites, and that's a really key one, comparing sites get that element of competition between sites going, and you'll see some real benefits and savings. Identify energy inefficiencies, allocate costs to manage uh, energy budgets, and ultimately reduce energy consumption and costs. So that might be a useful slide uh, to just give a little bit of insight into the thought processes we went through um, at the same time as we were spe specking our new EDV2. So EV2, by the way, is in the process of being launched. Those of you who are customers will be hearing a lot more about it very, very soon indeed, uh, because this product is ready, as I say, EV2. But we did a bit of research into, you know, what is it about you as customers that, that makes you want to buy energy management software? And we really came up with seven things, which are, I think, well documented. One is to understand energy consumption in detail, focus on the words in detail. Um, second of all, to identify inefficiencies and where energy savings can be made, um, but ultimately regain control of an entire energy estate, particularly in large dispersed, dispersed portfolios. Again, that is very much a characteristic of some of the customers that we've got. We've mentioned some of them, Bourne Leisure, Pizza Express, very dispersed portfolios extremely important to have access to those, that energy consumption data. Increasingly also, um, the driver is to meet regulatory obligations um, and also to engage staff in energy awareness. ED or our web tool is a great way of getting your staff engaged and aware as to what's going on at their site and how that might be in comparison to some of their other sites. I think I've already mentioned that uh, that the fact of talking about enhancing environmental credentials and brand image that is increasingly an important uh, driver on this whole concept of 
corporate and social responsibility. But ultimately, you know, you can say all of that all day long, but really it's about saving money. You know, time and time again, people tell us, every single survey tells us very, very clearly, it's really about saving money. So the other, some, I'm going to sort of focus perhaps just for a moment on the very first point here in terms of the changing drivers for buying this kind of software. Now, it might sound a bit contentious to you. Energy managers are no longer necessarily industry experts. You might think about that one for a second. Energy managers traditionally have had a lot of background experience in energy management. However, not um, now energy management is just one part of an environmental and sustainability agenda, and people increasingly actually want software to do the work that was previously done by an expert energy manager. Perhaps a good example of that one, which I've used once or twice before, is that the of energy management at Peterborough Council, his last job was as head of parks and gardens. I think that illustrates that, that point reasonably well. So as a business, we actually created EDV, Energy Data Division, about 10 years ago as a build validation tool. Um, however, what we're seeing now is that there is a significant shift now in terms of what people want from this kind of software towards what the bill will be in the future. Yes, validation is important and there's a whole industry uh, of energy consultants who that is one of their key services, so that is important. But increasingly we're seeing a shift towards what the bill will be in the future and that is incredibly important in terms of the kind of functionality EDV will deliver you ultimately to save money. The other thing that's probably important to say, and when I, when I conducted some uh, telephone calls with some of our partner colleagues, and thank you to those of those who gave me some feedback specifically about the leisure sector, what was interesting was that you know, our research shows that the top three company costs these days are in order of importance, staff, raw materials, and, and energy. Actually, in the leisure sector, I've had two out of three people who spoke with me about it saying, well, actually, energy is the number two cost within the leisure sector. So I think it's the reasons why perhaps we've had, we've had so much interest in this webinar uh, in terms of focusing our expertise, data gathering and visualization and control technologies to help you reduce those costs. And also, uh, so 50,001 legislation regarding saving money, things like that are, 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 are coming in as well. So the final point there on, on this particular slide, bullet point five, there generally seems to be declining interest in historic data. I know I've said this already, but I do want to emphasize it. And the emphasis today is on forecasting and scenario planning. And this is one of the things that customers really are interested in uh, today. So I've got a nice pretty graphic here of EDV 2.0, which is in the process of being launched now. Um, we've prioritized the provision of a new powerful energy management web tool to our customers uh, following the, uh, the existing EDV, which has been around for getting on for 10 years. In terms of uh, just a little bit of insight, uh, this isn't necessarily the correct forum to demonstrate a piece of software. There'll be plenty of examples time later with individual customers to talk about what EDV2 will do. But this is just some short examples and some graphics of how for example, this is looking at a portfolio structure within our new EDV tool. It's, the, the web itself is effectively a repository of all energy-related material to that particular customer. So that's a, an important point to bear in mind. It's a repository of data. You can attach all sorts, not just data, but documents and anything related to your customers and their energy consumption. The slide shows how a customer, for example, can set up groups specific to that client and that might include things like geographic regions, as well as a wide range of consumption parameters, including electricity, gas, water, heat, oil, steam. The list goes on. There's something like 40 different parameters, all of which can be measured and managed through EDV. This particular portfolio structure even allows the user to drill down right down to meter asset level, at which point all available information on that particular measurement asset that meter asset is available to view. Again, that might include everything from the site name to the location, to the type of site, to the geographic code and area of, of that, right through to some of the more advanced functionality because this is an international uh, piece of, this is a tool that really has a global reach. 
So it had things like language modules coming up, becoming available. Uh, it allows you to personalize it because ultimately, more and more of you tell us, and it's, 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 it's really not rocket science, and it's obvious in many respects, but people want the experience of this web tool to be personal to them. And that might mean if we're taking it outside of the UK, that it supports language modules, uh, different currencies, and so on. It really gets into some of the more useful functions, I think. And these are just, this is just a really simple uh, consumption, energy consumption report. It's looking at a seven day period. It allows the user to graph it uh, over a particular time scale. So you, 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 go, you go into the new ED web tool, you select what asset you want to look at, in other words, what meter you want to look at, what time period, and run a report. And it runs it right there then for you. The example here is quite a good one because it shows consumption patterns over a week uh, and actually shows quite a, a high base load, um, which I'm sure some of you will, will take note of. Actually, that's our building here in Milton Keynes, and that's easily explained by the fact we have a lot of computer and modems dialing up hundreds of thousands of meters every night. So that's really when they come alive, hence the high base load. Um, got some other great reports. The report here, for example, is an example of our daily benchmark uh, report. And I'm showing it here in its new updated format. Some of you already have this for existing EDV. Uh, this, is, this has remained uh, for many years, and I, and I have the similar expectations for this version. It's really one of our most popular energy management reports because it, it lets you target your performance with some effective benchmarks. It lets you monitor progress over the last four weeks. So, for example, you know, yesterday was Tuesday. How does yesterday, Tuesday's consumption, compare with the previous Tuesday, the one before that and the one before that? That enables you to pinpoint exact variances to target, focus on the times where savings can be achieved, and change behaviors and processes if necessary. This is just a quick example of somebody who really wants to go all the way in terms of uh, demonstrating to their stakeholders of, of, of how important um, energy savings it is to them. So, for example, many organizations take this corporate and social responsibility quite seriously. And this is an example of an energy showcasing dashboard. Really powerful stuff. It lets you demonstrate to your customers and your staff just how important this is. Um, these dashboards are typically displayed in the reception area of larger companies to demonstrate to commitment to reducing energy consumption. And in fact, they cycle through. There's a, there's a series of seven or eight slides within the showcasing dashboard, which allows you to see how you're doing in the current day, current consumption, rolling savings, and so on. It can be for electricity, gas, water, and so on. Quite powerful stuff, really. Moving with the, the analysis reports, well, just some more examples. This is another one that we've had for a little while. It's a monthly analysis report, produces miniature apps, one for each day the month and gives you an overall profile as well, lets you show your organization exactly where you're using energy on a day-to-day -day basis, puts that energy consumption in context, it makes the data relevant, helps you praise good performance performance and highlights for Im improvement. It also lets you show your organization the financial impact of any actions that you might take. The last one on the visualization section is a benchmark league table. I think I've hinted at that one already. This is a great one for anybody with multi, multiple sites, whether it be in the, the cinema sector, where, where, where I know it goes on, and the, certainly in the restaurant sector, and certainly in the leisure sector in general. And that is the whole concept of benchmarking against other sites. Get that whole element of competition going. This is a great way where site managers can actually see how they're doing compared to other sites. So if you show your organization where the energy has been used, Put that into context, make the data relevant, helps you praise good performance, and so on. The th and final area uh, I wanted to talk about today in terms of helping you understand the technologies and the services and equipment that's available to help you control energy is this whole idea of control. This is really where we're seeing huge market movement. We've been in this sector for, for about four and a half years now. This, well, what what means? this whole concept of reducing consumption and cost via this concept of control. Well, in simple terms, it's monitoring, viewing, and controlling energy consumption remotely. So as that, it's rule-based control of things like lighting, heating, air conditioning, and small power. So you can save, and this is the stuff that we come back to time and time again, up to 30% on energy consumption. And this is real. 
You know, this really does happen, and these are significant savings. It lets you target energy waste and prevent unnecessary energy spend, reduce your emissions, cut your costs, uh, and minimize energy-related admin overheads. So quite, quite useful. Again, across the piece, as per the graphic here, electricity, gas, and water, and other forms. Um, control 10, you might wonder, well, what is that and what is BEMS? Well, Control 10 is IM Service's new proprietary name for a mini BEMS, a Building Energy Management System. So BEMS, as many of you will know, it's been around for about 40 years, and it's often associated with very high-end, large energy users spending perhaps thousands of pounds, hundreds of thousands of pounds, typically on a BEMS system. The key difference um, with what, we're, what we offer these days is the costs have massively and very, very significantly reduced, which means it opens up this technology to an ever wider group of potential customers. So it's, as you can see on the slide, it's the next level of energy management. Uh, I've already mentioned the fact that it, it, its heritage is in larger scales. We, we, we don't need to worry about that so much. One of the, 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 the third point here, which I think is, is quite exciting and, and genuine, is that you know, we can actually control as much as 84% of a building's energy usage through these kind of control 10 devices. And as I say, there are other devices too. I think points four and five are, are worth just a very quick bit of focus because it helps perhaps explain to you the difference between the previous section when I talked about advanced monitoring and targeting and BEMS. They're very similar, as you can see. They both involve some level of submetering. They both involve data. They both involve the gathering of intelligence. But where they differ markedly is that AMNT, in line with just regular fiscal metering and data collection, can do action, but that action will only follow if you, as a, as a user, do something about it. You need to do something with the data. It's, it's the same thing. There's, there's no silver bullets. But ultimately, the difference with a Control 10 or BEMS type of control technology is that the, the, the service provider actually takes that action for you. That, that, I, I can't really sum it up any more simply than that. It's about taking that control for you and then actually running with it. That way, staff are able to focus on their day job, to allow single energy, a single energy policy to be carried out right across the organization. And it really is a very cost-effective alternative to full BEMS installations particularly for simple sites with low to medium levels of energy spend. Um, just a little bit more detail about that. Um, effectively, this whole concept of control is that the main areas that we would avoid waste is by controlling lighting, so looking at internal lux levels, external signage, so wood-based uh, technology that enables things to be turned on and off, controlling heating and cooling, uh, controlling small power and eliminating the human element. As we do that, well, the actual technology behind it is very straightforward. We can utilize wired or wireless solutions. Wired is better, but, but wireless is always available as well, if, if particularly if you want something to be non-intrusive uh, from an installation point of view. Um, this particular slide is quite a useful one because it, it shows the kind of savings that can be made over a seven-day period simply by controlling two things. In this particular example, we're really seeking to control lighting and heating stroke cooling. Um, so the worry is really, um, within, within this graphic, areas of savings, um, and, and you see those really on the shoulders of, of, of the diagram in terms of each of those seven days, um, to give you an idea, um, the green represents the total energy the, the, the total energy consumption line. The red line down towards the bottom um, is the the air condition consumption, and the red shaded areas are, are the, is the controlled consumption that um, that a BEMS system will give you. So effectively, you're seeing much smaller areas within each of those seven days where air conditioning is active. And then that drives into energy savings, which is re are represented in the white areas within the diagram. Um, so we're also giving you an example, uh, a, a, a short case study, where we had a nationwide clothing retailer with 250 stores. Um, very similar to what I've mentioned already, they were really desperately looking to control energy consumption. 
Um, they wanted to reduce their energy spend and they wanted to cut waste and they needed to get their staff engaged to do that. They had been trying and it was, it was difficult. They had mixed, limited success. We were already the data, data, data collector, which was good because it enabled us to do some proper initial analysis in using real consumption data over the previous period. In, in, in fact, all we did was we were seeking to control their lighting and their air conditioning primarily through door heaters. Um, as a result of the saving over a three-year period, in year one, there was a 10.6% uh, reduction in energy consumption. Year two, that had increased to 178 and by year three, it had gone up to 22.2%. So these were significant savings. In, in quite a large scale, I've talked about 30% saving, which is also possible. I think what was unique about this one, there were so many different store types a mixture of smaller and larger, which probably skewed, it, it gives you a good average of the kind of savings that can be made. So really, in summary, um, I think I said already, that there isn't really any silver bullet, but there's an awful lot you can take hope from. It's really about focusing and being the best at what really matters most. So for example, you know, we're going to give advice to you, uh, if you're a cinema, this, this, this concept of being the best at what matters most to your customers might just mean doing the basics extremely well in a consistent way. So it might include having wide choice of movies, comfortable seating, convenient parking, friendly and helpful staff, that kind of thing. For a gym, it might be top class equipment, plenty of it, wide choice of classes, trained and courteous staff, those type of things. In a similar way, I am served our focus, our expertise is on energy management. We focus our attention on delivering the basics, which is, uh, um, and do that by including things like competitive pricing, giving you reliable access to data, present powerful analytics through powerful web tools of the type that we have presented today. All of these tools um, enable you to save money. Uh, recently uh, attained Institute of Customer Service Accreditation in recognition of a very significant effort that. Um, our customer team, and in fact, the whole business has, has taken part in. So we do take we do take that very seriously. I'm going to finish um, really on some Jason Taylor said earlier because it really was that good. Which is the the top five energy saving tips. I think it is worth repeating. Um, there they are. It's you know to understand energy consumption across utilities, pinpoint where and why the the wastage is occurring, remove waste and implement action plans, review the communication approach, and ultimately to continuously monitor and evaluate uh, what, what, uh, what you've done. And I thank you um, sincerely for all of your time in attending this. I hope you've say, taken away some one or two useful points, like, like they say with any good book. Even if you were to take away one good point that you've picked up today, I doubt that will be valuable to you. Okay, thank you very much, Paul. Thanks, Jason. We've got some great questions coming through. Um, please keep them coming. What is the benefit of having full data visibility? And that one's over to you, Jason. That's a very, that's a very good question, Paul, I think. From, from that point of view, it allows you to make informed decisions. So with customers, based on their feedback, having electricity and gas and water data in one central area, and as Paul already mentioned, talking about energy data vision, the tool will allow you to look at your consumption across the board. So when you're putting in place your action plans, you're taking every utility into consideration. In addition to that, if you are installing the sub-metering, the sub-metering will also provide you with consumption data also. Okay, brilliant. Um, I think this one's for you, Paul. Alluded to the fact that you can make procurement savings simply by utilising better energy data. Could you explain this a little, little bit more? Sure. Um, and actually, I'd like to give you a, a very detailed answer on that, but I'll suffi suffice to say, I often ask the question, um, just following on the start of the process, capturing the energy data, which is so important, which actually lots of people in this sector are pretty good at, but how big an impact can effective use of that data um, be in, for example, areas like procurement savings. And the feedback we consistently get is that, particularly in the non-half-hourly world, the gas world, 
where you install smart metering uh, and or sub-metering, well, particularly smart metering, the procurement things are potentially poten um, typically between 5 and 10 percent. And the reason for that is actually quite simple. Um, you've actually de-risked. If you have a portfolio of 50 sites, for example, and you go along to six big six suppliers, you're asking for the best quote if you're an energy, um, as I say, with multiple sites. By presenting complete detailed information, typically over a period of one to two years, of, of a fairly kind, in effect, you've de-risked that for them. You've made their job much easier, and therefore you will see some significant reductions in costs. I can't quantify that exactly, but certainly consistently over the last number of years, um, the feedback I'm consistently getting is between 5 and 10% energy saving simply by utilizing that energy data for procurement. Right, um, and another one, um, I'll give this one to you, Jason. What approach would you take for installing equipment? That's an interesting question. I think, first of all, it's work with the customer to understand what they want to achieve. And again, as I advised previously, it's about bite-sized chunks and looking at the areas first. So first of all, electricity and installing uh, metering equipment to allow you to get accurate actual data uh, from your metering. Then you can move on to gas, then you can move on to water and look at other carriers. But based on our recommendation with other customers, uh, we would probably like to get that with you first of all. Uh, to understand what you would like to achieve, and then we can then put in place by working with, for example, Paul here, uh, a plan uh, to help your saving. Okay, good. and we've had this question a couple of times come through. Um, I think this one's for you, Paul. What's the minimum energy spend at a site that would justify the purchasing of a BEM solution? Yes, good question as well. Well, happily. The minimum energy spend is coming down and down all the time, very rapidly indeed. So it's, in other words, it's opening up that technology. Simple answer, it's about £6,000, £6,000 a year. And really that stacks up in this way. If, if you've got energy savings of between 15 and 20%, I know I'm quoting up to 30%, so it gives you plenty of room for manoeuvre. Um, it's like our Control 10, uh, which can cost from as little as £1,500 fully installed. That could give you a typical energy saving, let's say between 15 and 20 percent, all the way up to 30 percent. But with math, that actually gives you a payback of about 18 months. So even on an energy spend as little as uh, 6,000 pounds per year, that will give you a payback, as I say, in that period of time. So it really is opening up uh, this technology to a wider and wider range of customers. Thanks, um, Jason. I think this one's over to you. What is the benefit? of contracting services with the IMSERV generally? I think Paul has mentioned this already, but most importantly, we, we are independent. Uh, we're not tied to any supplier, and the customer has the flexibility to choose who they wish to move to. Uh, Likewise, if you are currently, energy prices are fluctuating quite a lot. We're finding customers are only locked into a one- or two-year uh, contract cycle. So in terms of uh, understanding what the requirements are, um, we help you support that. Most importantly, we would look at focusing on the solution for you as a customer and by working with you to understand, what, again, what you wish to achieve. But to summarize, because we're independent, it gives the customer the flexibility to choose what their products are, what their services are, and most importantly, we will work with you um, to deliver that. Fantastic. Um, another one just in for Paul. Um, how do you help your customer transform raw data into tangible action? Um, well, that's fairly straightforward to answer, in fact. Uh, and I think that it's a good question because it really touches on the fact that just because we can present data to you, for example, lots of customers receive data as a simple CSV file which is great if you're looking to process data, but not necessarily tangible uh, and, and prompting action. So the way we get around that is some of the reports I presented as part of the presentation, these energy management reports, these are Excel-based reports. We have something like 40 of them currently. We split them up into five or six different categories. So they come under things like financial, ca uh, financial packs, behavioral change packs, and so on. But with each of those sections, there are a whole set of 
pre-prepared uh, pre reports, which has, are, are very powerful indeed in terms of delivering data to you, right through to an end user at an email address, as a defined frequency. It doesn't necessarily create action. Uh, it's probably the fairest, it would be a fair thing to say. It, it, but it's giving you the tools, it's giving you the intelligence and the visualization to actually make those decisions. So uh, the answer, I think, that's question, that, that question is, it's through energy management reports. Okay, that's brilliant. Um, I'm afraid another one for you, Paul. Um, I think this probably is going to have to be our last one. This time's moving on. We'll see if we can get another one in after. What are the most important things that the leisure sector businesses are asking for in your experience at the moment? I would say two things. I've already mentioned water. Water really has taken us by, um, not by complete surprise, but to a degree that the sheer level of interest in water AMR. Uh, and we have stepped up our installation of water loggers quite significantly. Everybody knows there are big changes, as I've mentioned, in 2017, but people are looking to make changes, their own changes now. They need to reduce water consumption. Water AMR is a great way to do that at a low cost. So that's probably the, the biggest and the most important thing that seems to be happening at the moment. But an ongoing thing, there is increasingly a, a requirement and request through for better visualization services, which is one of the reasons why we're launching EDV2 and also from the, the supply channel and also from our partner channel, so these third-party intermediaries, um, we're seeing an increased requirement and request for white label solutions. In other words, these businesses are looking to personalize and deliver energy intelligence on their platform, and that's something we're, we're delighted to help with as well. Okay, this one, I think, for you, for you Jason, um, what's your experience in schools? And uh, where can they make savings? We have, a, um, we have experience. We have experience with schools and local government. Uh, I think most importantly is to to understand where the savings can be made, and again by putting in place equipment to help the schools measure that. Um, some schools are now coming out of government control, and they're becoming academies. So they are we're finding contracting separately. Uh, rather than coming under uh, group procurement. So, again, their, their individual approach is separate to a group approach. So, again, we would work with them to understand that. But we do have experience with schools. Okay, that's... Just to help with that, we do have a podcast available on schools, uh, which is available on our website, and that's www.imserve.com. Brilliant. So there's quite a lot of questions we're just, I'm afraid, not going to be able to answer today, but as usual, we'll get back to you as, as soon as we can on those. Thank you very much. And finally, uh, myself and Paul would like to say thank you to everybody for joining us today. And if you'd like any further information or if you have any questions, then please contact marketing at imserve.com. We would look forward to seeing our customers at our, our fantastic customer event at Williams Formula One um, in November on November the 20th. Uh, we do have a small number of places available and if you are interested in attending please again email marketing at imserve.com. Again thank you for watching and we look forward to speak to you in the future.